an observed tornado. So we do have confirmation of that tornado on the ground near Arcola. The festivity is about to kick off in just a matter of moments. 630 here in downtown Homewood for that Christmas parade. And as we turn our eyes to the skies across central Alabama, it's overcast and Annis, he's doing something right in T-Town. He's he's doing the rain dance. They had some rain earlier today. And I'm tracking more wet weather as we move into the weekend. The question is, will your entire weekend be a complete washout? However, the rain that we're seeing right now, not directly related to Barry. Gustiest winds, and that's where the greatest danger is, but that will continue moving toward. Look how well defined this notch is. Today, we focus on air quality. We hit 101 today in Birmingham, shattering our previous record. I'll be watching for a few isolated thunderstorms as these converging air masses meet that this storm has produced a tornado from Mississippi and even into Alabama. Moment, so the storm timing tonight, here's what you need to be focused on between now and 9 o'clock in West Alabama. Hey, but I need to remind you, a little over a week ago, we were standing right here building, albeit a little slushy snowman, and now check out the temperatures, 79 degrees. Well, today it's all about smoke and mirrors. Oh. Wait, hold on. Another stunning sunset, this time in Hamilton. Temperature sitting at 63 currently, slipping into the 40s overnight tonight. A chill in the air, sunny and bright, and 70 again tomorrow. Slight break is on the way, thanks in part to some rain, though. So a little bit of a trade-off. We get the wet weather, which we actually need some of the rain yeah. in some spots. Rain gear is necessary. We are covered here, but I tell you what, with the winds at around 20 miles per hour, that rain is moving in a bit sideways. And so it's moving through downtown. Wow, that lightning was really impressive. So we do have confirmation of that tornado on the ground near Arcola, and that was just outside of Demopolis. If you live in Greensboro, you need to seek shelter immediately. But more importantly, we want to focus our attention where we would see that center of circulation. We're noticing that inflow not notch becoming a little bit greater. Look how well defined this notch is. This is cause for concern, and this is also some cause for some quick action on your part. If you can hear our voice right now. You don't have to see me. If you hear my voice and you live in Greensboro, if you live in Melton, if you live in Millwood, you need to get to your safe spot immediately. Rosemary, you're included in that. Dominic, get to your safe place. I'm starting to see the lightning count increase. That means the storm is re-intensifying. The inflow notch is very evident of circulation. We have rotation. There is no doubt that we have rotation. So as this storm is tracking along to the north and to the east, it's literally feeding off of that warm, wet air. Hailstones forming, so there's likely hail. You've got the gusty winds. You've got significant lightning. And this is all tracking to the north, northeast. This storm system has history. We already have had confirmation that this storm has produced a tornado from Mississippi and even into Alabama. Right now, it's tracking north northeast at around 45 miles per hour, so it's a fairly fast moving system. You've got 10 minutes until the storm reaches you. Even if you live in a mobile home or manufactured housing and you can get to a neighbor's house that is a brick building, I would urge you to do that. This is very important because this could be um, this could be life saving if you just get yourself to a sturdy structure. Most sturdy structures will be able to withstand this kind of damaging wind, but this is going to be a big storm. They are watching this lightning just intensify. It is lighting up the night sky worms. And when we talk about tornadoes developing, lightning is a byproduct a lot of times of these tornadic storms. Greensboro, along with County Road 28, get to your safe place now. Extending off to the northeast, because this storm is going to be tracking pretty much along State Route 69. So again, you have two different colors, essentially, and the darker one color and the brighter the other. That indicates that area of rotation. Our weather alert unit right now. So Griffin, tell us what you've been watching over the last several minutes. Let's, and when we slice through it, I'm looking for a couple of things. I'm looking for hail cores and I'm looking for the height of these storms. The higher these storms, that often indicates the strength of these storms. So each little line that you see here is 10,000 feet. So we've got 10, 20, 30. These storms are about 40 and 50,000 feet in height. They're huge, okay? You can actually see where the updraft itself is kind of tilting off to one direction. That also indicates that there's 
very strong winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere. As we get closer into Shelby County and the Birmingham Metro, we really start to put a lot more neighborhoods in there. The number of people impacted is going to grow immensely as this storm continues to track off to the northeast. Today we focus on air quality. Every day we measure the air around us and the air quality index measures particles in the air and is used to tell us how clean or how dirty the air is. Imagine the AQI as a yardstick from zero to 500 divided into six categories. Each category corresponds with a different level of health concern. When the air is clean, it's rated good, but when it's really bad, it falls into the hazardous category. Here's how it all breaks down. When the AQI is 0 to 50, it's good, it's green. Air pollutants serve little to no risk. When the AQI is 51 to 100, it's moderate, yellow, and generally only a concern for people with really high sensitivity for pollution. For example, people who are unusually sensitive to ozone may experience respiratory symptoms. When the AQI is 101 to 150, it's unhealthy for sensitive groups, Orange, general public isn't affected, just those with increased sensitivities. When the AQI is 151 to 200, it's unhealthy, it's red, and everyone may start to experience some health effects. When the AQI is 201 to 300, it's very unhealthy, purple. We can start to see serious health effects and it becomes a health alert situation. When the AQI is 301 to 500, it's hazardous, maroon, health warning of emergency conditions. So the purpose of the AQI or the air quality index is to help you understand what local air quality means to your health. Aniston sitting at 66 with Hamilton at 64. Clouds beginning to increase to our west. Temperatures across the board the same. Cloud cover and rain is going to be the big story for tonight. Increasing rain chances as we dive deeper into the evening hours. Now, if you want to head out for dinner tonight, you're fine. No rain to contend with. If you expect to let those plans linger into the latter hours of the evening or early tomorrow morning, well, prepare for that wet weather. That rain likely to begin in northwest Alabama closer to midnight, continuing through the early morning tomorrow. Now, there will be rain before sunrise, and then we'll see clearing skies through the afternoon. Temperatures in the mid-60s, but we will see those temperatures cooling relatively quickly once the sun sets tomorrow night. All right, here's where that rain is right now. Heaviest rain fall in North Mississippi and West Tennessee. Some isolated storms back to our West prompting some significant weather there. We have tornado watches in place for Arkansas and Northern Louisiana. Notice no tornado watches in Mississippi. However, that's where we're seeing the most, I would say, colorful imagery from our radar, but it's just rain in North Mississippi right now. For Alabama, pretty clear. A few showers beginning to slide into our west, but most of the bulk of that wet weather from Oxford, Mississippi down to Greenwood, all the way up towards the delta there. So we'll continue tracking this wet mess. It is tracking to the north northeast, so it is going to take it some time to actually move into Alabama. Here's what we're looking at over the next few hours. As I mentioned, going out to dinner tonight, totally fine. Need to maybe wrap up some of those last minute shopping plans before Thanksgiving, head out to the grocery store. You're going to be completely fine. It's midnight to 2 a.m. This rain moves into West Alabama. Again, nighttime hours means that the dynamics are not quite in place for severe weather, but a rumble of thunder can't be ruled out. Gustiest winds and chance for those thunderstorms will be along that leading edge. 3 a.m. Birmingham. Now you're starting to get the rain. Tuscaloosa, Moundville, and that extends all the way up through Asheville, Gadsden, into Huntsville. By 4 a.m., most of the bulk of the rain is pushed east of I-65. Some lingering showers from Clanton all the way down to towards Perry County. East Alabama is going to see that bulk of that rain early tomorrow morning, and then we'll see that clearing sky as the sun rises tomorrow. Sunshine will be in full supply for your Wednesday, and then as we move into your Thanksgiving Day holiday, things will dry out. That cold front will push that rain right along overnight tonight, and then the return of sunshine, and Thursday is looking great.
week, but then we'll be tracking another bout for some wet weather late Friday into Saturday, which could impact that Iron Bowl forecast. Well, here's a look at your Thanksgiving Day forecast for lunch. Temperatures will be in the mid 50s, lower 50s for dinner time, and then later in the evening. Temperatures there in the upper 40s. We're continuing to keep an eye on how things will be faring in the plains simply because we are looking for the chance of rain later on for that final whistle by around 630. The start of that game should be dry, so that's good news there. And then rain clears out Sunday and then much cooler as we enter into next week. And that's a look at your storm team seven day forecast. Sherry.